There I am. Back here in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Subravivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Last night, the best tribute show I ever saw in my life. AW's tribute to Brody Lee. It was fantastic. Throughout the show, they sprinkled videos from various AEW wrestlers. John Moxley opened up the show, and there were others as well. And there are many more that AEW has put online that weren't on the show last night. And WWE has just put out a six-minute video with their wrestlers talking about Brody Lee, so you can go up there and check that out. Then we had a bunch of matches. And the story of the show was the Dark Order was involved in every match. And yes, the Dark Order won every match. And on top of just winning the match in storyline, as we've talked about many times, if you look at where the Dark Order was exactly to the week one year ago, they were, as people like to say, in the mud. And one year later, here they are headlining the final show of the year. Not just headlining, but individual performances. And this is strictly their AW performances on the Dynamite television show because many of these individuals have had great performances throughout their career. But as far as on AEW Dynamite, Cole Cabana, I thought Evil Uno, Anna J. Um, I guess is, uh, I'm not sure that, uh, Ty Conti's officially in the new order, but, or the, the dark order, but one after another, I mean, they had their best performance ever on this television show. Hardy and private party versus young bucks and Colt Cabana. Colt made this fantastic comeback, got the pinfall. It was great. Then of course, heels came out the acclaimed and they got beat up as well. We had evil Uno, Steve, Stu Grayson and Lance Archer versus Eddie Kingston, butcher and the blade. Uno and Grayson hit their finish, got the pin there, and then all three babyfaces ping-ponged Eddie Kingston around the ring, and Jake Roberts grabbed the wrist, laid him out with the big Rainmaker. I watched that like 15 times last night. That was so great. We had Hangman Alex Page and John Silver versus MJF and Santana and Ortiz. Whatever you want to say about tribute shows, whatever you want to say about tribute videos, whatever... The greatest tribute match in the history of tributes was this match right here. It was perfect. MJF is out there screaming at Brody Lee Jr., the eight-year-old son of Brody in the front row. He's got the mask on. All of these guys have their greatest individual performances on Dynamite. John Silver's out there in the gear that Brody Lee bought him. He makes the greatest babyface comeback. MJF goes out there, he yanks the mask off Brody Lee Jr., who hides his face. But then it's more important to get the revenge on the heel. So he grabs his kendo stick and he whacks MJF in the head. MJF takes this great bump. And then, of course, everybody, uh, Silver hits the Brody Lee discus lariat and gets the pin. Oh, forgot. How can I forget? I don't even know, just because everything happened. But the heels are are trying to run wild and cheat, and who should come out to make the save? Who should come out to run Wardlow off? But the former Eric Rowan, Eric Redbeard. That guy hit the save. I got to say, and many others have said this as well, you know, when, when I thought this when Brody was sick, and I think Matt Cardona said that he was waiting for this after Brody already passed away. Everyone's just waiting for the moment where Luke Harper or Brody Lee makes his big giant comeback. And of course it will never happen. But man, when the Vintner ran out there out of nowhere and made that comeback, it was the greatest. This was the best tribute match I've ever seen in my life for any individual person. Ty Conti, Anna Jay versus Penelope Ford and Britt Baker. Ty Conti, best individual dynamite performance. Anna J, same thing. They were on fire. Match was fun. Penelope tapped out to Anna J. They got the big win. And then, of course, the main event. Uh, Brody Lee Jr., six-man dream match. His favorite wrestlers, Will Hobbs, Ricky Starks, and Brian Cage. They faced Orange Cassidy, Ten, and Cody. Of course, they won. And after the match, after this clean sweep, all these baby faces, they're, they're the dark, uh, whatever their name is, Taz's crew comes out, they want to beat everybody up, but who should make the save but Darby and Sting and the heels bail, happy ending, 
And then, of course, we get the, quote, official uh, tribute to Brody Lee, which is Cody cutting a promo. Tony Khan comes out. They've got Brody's boots. They put him in the middle of the ring. And then Tony Khan announces that these boots are retired. Your father, the greatest TNT champion we ever had, all due respect to, to Cody here. And this belt is now for you. He takes the TNT title, which, I mean, think of what they went through to get that belt. I mean, they designed it, and then we had a pandemic, and it was, like, silver. And then they had to wait for several months to even get it gold-plated. They finally get it gold-plated, and now they're giving it up. And they're going to make a new belt for Darby Allen because the original, there's not a replica, it's the TNT title, it was given to Brody Lee Jr., And it has been officially retired. Show ends with the best tribute video I ever saw. Tony Khan noted he bought the rights to the music. So, I mean, forever. If it's on YouTube, if it's on some replay, if it's on a future AEW network, if they ever have one, you'll always have this video. It's a gift to all of you wrestling fans and the family. I thought it was awesome. This was just the best show ever. If you want to troll in the uh, chat, like you're out of here. So just go once so we can get rid of you. I haven't seen anybody say anything negative about this, nor have I looked for it, but, I mean, it was just so great, and like I said, it's a tragedy it happened, but you know what? It happened, and when things happen, there's always going to be a reaction to it, and what they did as a reaction to what happened was just, it was the greatest, so, any comments, Mike? Forget about changing the landscape with Sting or with Shaq, I mean... AEW changed the landscape um, in front of the scenes with how they treated this tribute behind the scenes, how they're treating Brody Lee's family and the way they are taking care of them. And we saw that actually dribble to on screen. That was one of the best televised tributes I've seen for anybody that has ever passed away. I mean, everything hit last night and it was it was a beautiful, wonderful celebration that I hope we don't have to see again for a long, long time. Um, even from a wrestling point of view, they still got things accomplished. They still got storylines, even though we had wacky members of tag teams, you know, with, with Preston Vance because he was negative one's favorite and that Brody Jr. being called negative one <laughs> because of his age, uh, his number in the dark order. I mean, everything, everything was great. And uh, like I mentioned, I, I, I don't even have the right words and I'm not going to babble on about it because beautiful. It was just beautiful. And it raised the bar. It changed the game for how we should take care of tributes and how we should honor people, especially people with the cachet that uh, John Huber had, because that's the biggest thing, no matter what else comes out of the last couple of days, uh, the value of his life, what he meant to people, how important of a, a person he was to the people that were around him. I mean, that's what that video really showed last night, wherever this man has gone, whatever he has done, uh, he has left good feelings in his wake, and they could not have done a better job last night. I don't care what ratings are, all that sort of stuff. doesn't matter what effect it had on NXT. Who cares? It was for one night, professional wrestling got it right, and there's such a history of it not doing so. It was just, I'm over the moon, and over the moon for that man's family that it happened the way that it did. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.